first and second grade. Today I'm going to read you a story called Guitar Genius. Uh, this is the story of Les Paul, who was the person that invented the electric guitar. It's really, really cool. And the story takes you all the way to when he was a little boy and he was making inventions in this house. Just like when you guys made your own instruments, he was doing the same thing. And then he went on and invented the electric guitar. It's really, really interesting. And I hope that you'll enjoy some of the music that I put in the story as well. Okay, enjoy the story. Guitar Genius by Kim Tomzik, illustrated by Brett Helquist. How Les Paul engineered the solid body electric guitar and rocked the world. In a three-story schoolhouse near the Fox River in Waukesha, Wisconsin, children scrambled into the music room. Tambourines shimmied, drums boomed, and bells clanged. Little Lester loved it all. The punchy pluck of banjo chords, the bright twinkle of piano keys, and the rise and fall of notes. Lester couldn't read the music sheets. Those tracks of squiggly lines and black dots didn't make sense. But it didn't matter. The fun part was all the sounds he could make. At his after-school piano lesson, his teacher sighed and pinned a note to his shirt. He skipped all the way home. What does it say, he asked, grinning from freckle to freckle. Well, Lester's mother said gently, it says you'll never be musical. Lester's shoulders sank. His mother tore the paper up into tiny pieces. You are going to be great. Really? You can do anything you put your mind to. Lester thought about that. He did a lot of thinking. One day, while he was stuffing newspapers for his paper route, his buddy Harry showed up wrapping wire around an empty oatmeal can. What are you doing, Harry? I'm building a crystal radio set. Well, that was interesting. So Lester gathered bits and parts and built his own crystal kit. Then he wired it right to the bed springs in his mattress for an antenna. Out of his home-built radio floated the warm drawl of guitar strings. Wowza! Lester saved his paper route earnings until he had enough to order his very own guitar. As Lester opened the box, his finger hit one of the guitar strings. You already sound great, Lester, his mother said. He didn't. Lester fumbled through the chords. His fingers floundered over the fretboard. He even blundered through the B notes. His hands weren't big enough to reach all six strings, so he removed one. And then he practiced and practiced until... He could play the guitar, the banjo, and even the harmonica. He sounded so slick that the manager of WTMJ invited him to play on the radio. Mister, his mother said, you don't know how good that sounds. I wish you could hear it like we do when you play on the radio. Lester wished that too but he didn't own a recording device. It was the 1920s. Nobody he knew owned that sort of gadget, but that was okay. If he didn't have a recording device, he'd build one. He scrutinized the family's newfangled gizmos tinkering in his mother's living room and his father's garage. And then he took everything apart. Things like the phonograph, the player piano, the telephone, and the radio. Ma, his big brother hollered, the kid's at it again. Leave him alone, Ralph, his mother said. He's just trying to learn. With a Cadillac flywheel, a dentist's belt, a nail, and other pieces and parts, he built a recording lathe so he could record his music. He made recordings of his guitar strumming and harmonica humming. 
and then he played them back to figure out how to make it sound better. Soon, he could whip out all sorts of knee-slapping, hillbilly melodies. Everybody said he was super. But Lester wanted to be even better. He wanted to play both sides of his harmonica while he plucked his guitar. You only have two arms, you goofus, Ralph said. You can't flip a harmonica and play guitar at the same time. Everybody knows that's impossible. But Lester thought it was possible. So when Ralph left for work at the neighborhood dry cleaning store, Lester picked up a coat hanger left lying around the house. He fitted the hanger over his shoulders and shaped the other ends to fit the harmonica so he could flip the instrument with his chin and play twice as many sounds. Hot dog! It worked! He could hum and strum at the same time. At 13 years old, Lester called himself Red Hot Red. He landed local gigs by playing his guitar harmonica act and telling funny stories. He performed for tips at nearby movie theaters, clubs, and drive-ins. Folks who sat up front loved the act, but people in the back complained. We can't hear you, Red! Nobody in the back can hear you play! Lester wanted his music heard up front, in back, and in the way, way back. His tips depended on it. He thought and thought until a solution struck him. He could make it louder. All he had to do was borrow a few things from home. A cinder block, a broomstick, a telephone, and a radio. He stuffed the broom handle into the cinder block and mounted the telephone's mouthpiece to the top of the broom handle. There, a microphone stand. Then he wired it to the radio to create the speaker for the sound. Lester sang and played his harmonica into the homemade mic. Sure enough, the tune boomed from the speaker. Hooray! Folks in the front could hear, folks in the back could hear. But a heckler in the way, way back sent a note to Lester. Red. Your voice is fine, your harmonica's fine, and your jokes are funny, but the guitar is not loud enough. Lester rummaged through the garage until a brilliant idea zipped to mind to take the tone arm off his father's phonograph player and jam the arm with a needle into the top of the guitar. He taped everything in place and wired it to his dad's radio. Geez, Ralph said, staring at the ruined phonograph, What'd you do that for? If it plays a phonograph record, it must play a guitar, right? They both vibrate. He snatched up the contraption and headed back to Beekman's Barbecue to test it out in front of a crowd. It worked. Harmonica sounds floated from one radio speaker. Guitar strumming amplified from the other radio speaker. Everyone could hear. It was a smashing success. Almost. The problem was it wasn't just the strings vibrating, the hollow space in the middle of the guitar vibrated too, making his speaker echo and screech. Lester knew he could play cleaner tones if he could just stop the guitar from vibrating. How though? It bamboozled him. He tried stuffing the hollow center with rags, rocks, and a tablecloth. Nope. Next, he filled it with the plaster of Paris, and that was a bust, and a ruined guitar. But Lester had one more idea. He borrowed a wagon and convinced four friends to trek down a steep riverbank to the railroad tracks to help him. There, he found a two-and-a-half-foot piece of discarded steel rail. Back at home, he attached a guitar string to the rail, and placed a telephone microphone under the string to pick up the sound vibrations. Now what are you doing? Ralph asked. There's only one way to do this, Lester said. Steel is dense and free of the vibrations I don't want. He gave his steel guitar a strum. Yowzer, Ralph said. But his mom, who usually thought Lester was the cat's meow, shook her head and frowned. That'll be the day when you see a cowboy sitting on a horse, playing a railroad track. All the cowboys in the movies and traveling shows played guitars. 
Shucks. Guitars and cowboys went together like peanut butter and jelly. If a cowboy wouldn't like this idea, then nobody would. Rats. But Lester pushed on. He tweaked and tinkered until he found a way to amplify his acoustic guitar without the echo and the feedback. It sounded okay. Good, even. But it wasn't the rich sound he'd heard the steel rail play. He continued practicing, and when he turned 17, his mom let him take his act on the road. At 19 years old, he shortened his name from Lester Paulfus to Les Paul. A few years after that, he formed a band called the Les Paul Trio. He played hillbilly music in the daytime as Rhubarb Red, and then later learned blues and jazz at night as the Wizard of Waukesha. He swapped licks on his guitar in Chicago and then in New York beside some of the greatest musicians of the time. The new style of music got Les's mind ticking again. He loved the variety of sounds, the vibrato of clarinets, the bdumts of drums, and the blurp of horns, but the twang of his guitar still wasn't loud enough. By the time Les turned 24, he'd become a hotsy totsy musician. Even the president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, loved his tunes when Les and his razzmatazz jazz trio performed at the White House. Still, Les dreamed of the sound, that, that iron rail. How could he make an electric guitar that held a note like that? The question prickled and pestered in his mind until 1941, when he was 26 years old. But he didn't have equipment or a workshop. Nothing. But he was Red Hot Red, Rhubarb Red, the Wizard of Waukesha. He could do anything he set his mind to. The night watchman at the Epiphone Guitar Factory let him in on Sundays. There, he took a 4x4 four four piece of solid pine wood, hooked on an Epiphone neck, his own homemade pickups, and guitar strings. His solid body electric guitar looked like a log with strings on it, so he called it the log. And when he gave it a strum, hot dog, Les said, it was the best thing he'd ever heard. He took it to a swanky nightclub to show off his new sound. But when he played the log in front of a crowd, they didn't applaud. They didn't boo. Folks just looked at one another. What is that thing? Huh? How could the audience not hear what he heard? But Les's shoulders didn't sink, his eyes didn't get stingy, and he did not give up. Maybe the audience hears with its eyes. So Les returned to the Epiphone factory and told the watchman, everyone's confused, they don't know it's a guitar. But it wasn't a regular guitar. It was a solid body electric guitar. It purred, it hummed, it twanged in all the right places. And finally the sound he dreamed of had come alive. The crowd went wild. No matter what anyone told Les, he never stopped working on all kinds of sound. His hard work earned him a place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Grammy Hall of Fame, and many other halls of fame. He received the Trustees Award from the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences. At 89, Les Paul was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. When he walked on stage to receive his award, noise erupted and boomed from the crowd. Hot dog, Les thought. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed the story of Les Paul and how he created the first electric guitar. And uh, seeing all the different kinds of technology that he had to go through in order to make this new instrument. And he never ever gave up no matter what anybody told him. I love that story. There was one part of the book that I thought was super interesting. When Les Paul brought in his first version of his electric guitar, he was playing only on that big piece of wood, the railroad spike, that big piece of metal, right? And it sounded really good, 
he got all the sounds that he wanted, but the audience didn't like it. Remember? They didn't clap. They didn't boo, but they were just confused, right? And Les Paul said, maybe people are hearing with their eyes. Isn't that weird? Can we hear with our eyes? Probably not, right? But when we see something, we expect it to sound a certain way. When we see a bass drum like this, we're expecting it to have a low, loud sound. We're not expecting it to have something like this. And when we see a flute like this, we're expecting it to have a high, pretty, metallic sound. Definitely not something like this. Yes, the way that we see things really does change how we hear it, right? And Les Paul knew that because when he saw that people were confused about him playing that railroad spike with a guitar string on it, even though it sounded really good, they were confused because they were looking at a piece of metal. They needed to see that it was an instrument. So that's why he went home and he made it into something that looks more like a normal guitar. So, no homework this week. If you want to keep playing around with Chrome Music Lab, you can. Um, but next week we'll get back to that. And I hope that you enjoyed today's music lesson. Where you say hello and goodbye to Bongo. Bye-bye. Have a nice week. Bye.